Thank you very much for being here today. Uh, can you please introduce yourself to our audience? Sure. My name is Nada al Nashef. I'm the Assistant Director General at UNESCO for the Social and Human Sciences. We're here at the Firth World Forum on Intercultural Dialogue in Baku, Azerbaijan. Um, what's the importance of this event? Um, two years ago, uh, we came uh, to the third edition and we were watching really how this process would go. The Baku process has now uh, a very strong vision uh, and it resonates very deeply with UNESCO's mandate over the last 70 years, creating mind, uh, peace in the minds of men and women. Uh, the main, I think, objective now here for us, uh, and this event has become a fixture on our calendar uh, every two years, uh, is really to further promote uh, uh, this vision of the world as a place where dialogue uh, and exchange, uh, thoughtful debates, uh, bridges uh, between academics, decision makers, civil society activists, young people uh, come together to really look at the latest that mm. we have done. And for us, uh, very importantly, of course, allows us uh, to hold certain events here with a view uh, to making the most of what is becoming a really dynamic gathering of people. How many people are you expecting? Uh, the ver I mean, it varies, but I can tell you that just for UNESCO, UNESCO started with uh, six or seven events last time we were here, which was already a stretch. Uh, this year we have 13 events over the three days because we're using a preparatory day, and we have over 25 staff just coming, which is exceptional. From our offices in Abuja and Harare to Bangkok and uh, Paris as well. Um, this is a sign of the importance we attach to the gathering and to the substance of the meeting. And how many participants? Well, I think uh, well over 500, 600, but uh, I think uh, our hosts are continuously raising the bar on participation. Uh, but I think it's a very important occasion for us in the sense also uh, that we have launched initiatives that have now become synonymous with the Baku process. Two years ago, we had our first forum of our academic chairs on intercultural dialogue. It was a group that had hardly met. We brought uh, almost 40 of them together. Two years later, we have a solid process, we have a coordination network, we have a publication which we're launching here uh, on multiculturalism uh, that really came out of this dedicated process. Two years ago, we told them if we have something to produce, we come back this year. The network is now an intrinsic part of the Baco process and we can also calibrate our progress that way. Similarly, we have a focal point system for the Silk Roads initiative uh, and launching an online platform here with the general support of the government of Azerbaijan. Again, we've had meetings in 2015 in China, 2016 in Spain, and we had already targeted that Baku would be a great place to bring these experts together to exchange. Uh, again, we went from the westernmost to the easternmost tips of the Silk Road, and today we are at the heart of the Silk Road in Baku, where there's a great commitment to uh, perpetuating, I think, uh, some of the most valuable lessons learned from that experience. So they've come together, converging. What would you say are some of the challenges that you've encountered in advancing the Baku Forum? Well, I think it's it's not so much the form, of course, what it stands for. I mean, I think the world has become a very complicated place. Uh, we are looking at huge innovations in technology, in productivity, uh, the possibility that cities now become locus for more creation uh, and more inspiration than ever before. At the same time, we are facing increasingly uh, tensions that come out of the lack of trust uh, that are to do with how much insecurity there is in the world, uh, and I don't mean just physical, but I think this notion of coexistence, what it means uh, in the worlds of the sustainable development goals, the Agenda 2030, we are looking to establish norms for social justice. We continue to advocate, of course, for social inclusion, social integration, acceptance, not just tolerance, but empathy. Uh, we uh, embrace uh, welcoming cities for refugees and migrants, and yet there are tensions. There are tensions at the city level, there are tensions in global politics, and I think our objective here, the like-minded coalition of people that have become the Baku process, all the organizations that co-sponsor, as UNESCO does, is really to find that common axis uh, where we continue to engage, to inform 
scientific evidence for why it doesn't make sense to be racist, why discrimination hurts socially, economically, as well as from a standard setting point of view. Um, and I think the challenges have grown in that sense. Uh, the globe is, is evolving also and in very different ways. We could not have predicted, but we must try to accompany and understand and in many cases preempt. There's been a clash of cultures of late where in the past it seemed with globalization there was a sort of melting pot and people were embracing new cultures. Um, how can the people who are attending this forum, how can they have an impact a wider impact in terms of reaching out to those who are afraid of the other, who are afraid of this, of embracing new cultures. I think what's really important is the constituency of the Baku Forum. This is not just, for example, an academic forum where you are preaching among the really converted and the like-minded and we we bring our um, uh, chairs, of course the UNESCO chairs, who are all working on very important academic and research initiatives, but we bring also the focal points from cities, from local authorities. Uh, we have a panel today to discuss welcoming cities given the migration flows, to discuss some of the tools that we have been developing to enable cities to cope better. There is a ministerial forum being convened also, culture and tourism. And this is very important, that we don't leave the policymakers on their own. The objective is to influence decision-making uh, with evidence-based policies. And I think uh, this, uh, the negative, let me say, the downside of how we are growing with friction needs to be minimized, mitigated. The Secretary General of the United Nations, Mr. Antonio Guterres, has made prevention a key uh, objective of his mandate. And I think that's where we all are now. Uh, there's no point uh, tackling this, uh, the largest ever humanitarian crisis, in his words, uh, with this influx of, of refugees, uh, with this unprecedented levels of mobility, which should be opportunities to enrich, to, to feed the diversity into productive terms. Um, but because of the scale, because of perhaps the stark contrasts of culture, I don't think it's because before things were seamless and there were no threats perhaps perceived, but perceptions count. Uh, so I think the real issue now is how to reduce, not by isolating further, not by creating barriers, but by really focusing on the bridges, removing preconceptions, understanding um, fears, of course, is very, very important, but also educating, also investing in knowledge, uh, really, and in accompanying social transformation uh, so that we can make a difference where it counts most, at the country level, at the sub-regional level, but also at the global level, which is where we are today. Mm -hmm. um, the last forum gave a prominent role to young people mm -hmm. in advancing um, intercultural dialogue. What about this year? Um, we have also tried, I mean, I think certainly this is UNESCO's uh, view uh, on how to engage young people. I think it's not about uh, allowing, uh, simply allowing young people to be beneficiaries of initiatives or projects. It's about more and more uh, youth-led action. I mean, it's young women and men taking their initiatives and telling us uh, how they would like to be involved. Uh, and, uh, and of course, we have to then uh, try to accommodate as best as we can. Uh, so we are trying certainly at UNESCO uh, to engage uh, not youth as representatives but young scientists, young researchers, young decision makers uh, from the different walks of life, whether they are environmentalists, uh, whether they are local city councillors for example. Uh, for us, uh, in the Silk Road, we have an interesting experience where we have young people undertaking photo journals of a journey in the Silk Road. The Silk Road is not just about the former generations of travelers. It is also very much, we hope, we're going to launch a photo competition on the Silk Road through young eyes. So it's also a multimedia engagement of young people, obviously the social media, which they are uh, very engaged with. But for us, photography, uh, culture as a whole, we are taking the opportunity to do um, an event on the Sharjah Prize of UNESCO, uh, which is about the dissemination of Arab culture across the regions of the world. And this year's laureate, uh, were two laureates, were young, um, a man and a woman, uh, one from the Arab world, one uh, French Tunisian, and the young, French Tunisian laureate is here, uh, does a combination of calligraphy and graffiti, 
calligraphy. Uh, <laughs> but really, they have lowered the average age of the laureates, I think, by about 25 years. And it's such a fresh perspective. So we're making a deliberate effort. And we bring them here to be our ambassadors, really, to the rest, including some of our goodwill ambassadors who are uh, still young and very keen to make a contribution. <laughs> Speaking of social media, um, how is this get-together going to help people brainstorm on ways to counter um, hate speech that's been on the rise, uh, counter um, the use of social media by terrorists? Uh, I mean, uh, first of all, I mean, I think it's important to note that uh, it's not a an issue just for young people, of course, and young people, the majority, the vast majority of young people are more concerned with developing their skill set, with making a contribution and with their own productivity and, and decent lives. Uh, um, so uh, that's the bigger, co co obviously, uh, co preoccupation, let me say. But UNESCO has worked a lot on preventing violent extremism, which is um, one of the topics of one of our panels here now, mainly looking at education and how you inculcate the values of solidarity, of citizenship, because it's a lot to do with citizenship in terms of the value set that we are advocating, to look at compassion, trust, tolerance in the context of tools, both inside school, in the formal education systems, but also what it means for young people outside the school networks. And UNESCO is very active to promote uh, the strategies and the competencies by teachers, for example, what is to be taught and how uh, we can advance uh, this agenda, uh, and also how we have different experiences from the world, what has worked and what has not. That will be a session here. It continues to be, of course, a topic of paramount interest for UNESCO and many of our partner institutions.